Pray that the might of the Lord and the strength of the Lord and the power of the Lord will come and impact every life in Jesus' name. That in the battles of life, we will all win the victory in Jesus' name. We're asking, Lord, that that spirit of the conqueror that wages the war against the enemy and wins every time, you grant to every one of us in Jesus' name. I will pray that on the final day, when the Lord shall come, none of us will miss our crown in Jesus' name. We we'll fight to win, and we are going to win the crown. We we'll thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you very much. You can sit down for our final message tonight. We're looking at winning the Conqueror's crown. Winning the Conqueror's crown. There is a crown to be won. And that is why the Lord is making Conqueror's out of Christians. He wants us to be so militant and so triumphant that at the end of the day, when He gives out reward, there will be crowns for everyone. Crown of righteousness and the crown of life, and the crown of glory. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate, self-controlled, and disciplined in all things. Now they do it to obtain or to win a corruptible crown, but we and incorruptible. That means that the Lord is helping us and giving us the grace that although the people of the world are doing what they do, they discipline themselves, they deny themselves, they fight according to the rules so that they can win a corruptible temporary crown. But we are winning an incorruptible crown that is eternal. In James chapter 1, Reading from verse 12, James chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 12. It talks about another kind of crown that we want to win. Spoken about the incorruptible crown. Here we are in James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endure temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. When he's tried, examined, and tested, and he doesn't fall, he doesn't give in, he doesn't give up, he doesn't say, I'm tired, I cannot go on anymore, he breaks it through, and he's able to stand in all the challenges of life. And when he wins that victory, the Bible says that he's going to win the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. And Jesus is talking to you and talking to me and talking to the old church in Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, it says in verse 11, Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. That's the reason why we have been talking about continuing with the Lord, being consistent with the Lord, not allowing temptation persecution, trial, slander, misrepresentation, the lies of men, a false doctrine to shift you from your very base to hold on to what you have and to hold on to all the teachings of the Word of God and to hold on to all the Christian experiences you have that at no time will you let go so that you'll be able to win this crown that no man take thy crown. What does it take to win? To win the crown. 
to win the incorruptible crown, to win the conqueror's crown. What does it take? It takes quite a lot of things. I'm going to divide the message to three parts. Number one, the cross before the crown. The cross before the crown. There are some people that do not think about the cross, about steadfastness, about yielding to the Lord, about absolute surrender to the Lord, about moving on and going on in spite of all the persecution, all the pressure, all the trial, all the testing, all the temptation. They just fall by the wayside. They think that because they raised up their hands in a crusade, or they came to a deeper life retreat, an altar call was made, and then they came forward, they think that is all. But we need to remind ourselves that there is the cross before the crown. There are some people, they have painted the Christian life as if there is no challenge at all, there is no problem at all. When the Lord is by your side, there is nothing for you to contend with, there is no battle, there is no conflict. We just sail on and sail on and sail on. It is not true. The Lord is telling us tonight that if we're going to win the crown, there is a cross before the crown. Number two, the consecration of the conqueror. Show me a soldier that's on the battlefield and he doesn't lay everything down for the defense of his nation. It's not going to be a good soldier. And show me a soldier in the kingdom of God that has no consecration, no commitment doesn't lay anything down, there's no self-denial, and there's no absolute surrender of his life, his heart, his property, and his will unto the Lord. It's not going to be a conqueror. If we're going to be conquerors in the Lord, the Lord is telling us there is the consecration, there is the commitment, and there is the sacrifice to be a conqueror, the consecration of the conqueror. Number three, our coronation and our crown. When on the final day, when the battle is over, when all the challenges are over, and when all the things will contain with today, when everything is over, and then we come on victoriously and triumphant. At the end of the day, there is the coronation and there is the crown. I come back to number one, the cross before the crown. The cross before the crown. We're coming back to First Corinthians chapter nine. First Corinthians chapter nine, verse twenty-four. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. That is, you look at the principles of Scripture. You look at the precepts of Scripture. You look at the commandments of the word of God. You hold on to those principles and to those precepts and to those commandments. And you are watching. You know that you must run according to the rule, according to the word of the Lord. If you are going to win so long that you may obtain. And every man, there's no exception. Some people think, if I leave this church and go to that other church, I will not hear anything about the cross, anything about self-discipline, anything about consecration, anything about absolute surrender, and then I can just enjoy my Christian life. Every man that has this hope in him purifies himself. Even when I see his peer, and he says over here, every man that strives for the victory, for triumph, for the mastery, is temperate in all things. That's what temperate means, that you are subdued. That's what temperate means, you are self-controlled. That temperate means that it's not everything that occurs to you, you just say. Anything that occurs, just go there. Anything that occurs, just do it. There is this temperance, the self-control. And it says, anyone that is striving for the mastery, you cannot just do as you please. If you are striving for the mastery, it's like the soldier in the army. He's striving for the mastery. It's like the athlete on the field. He's striving for the mastery. There is control. What you eat, what you drink, when you sleep, when you wake up, who your friends are, what you put on, what you don't put on, where you go, where you don't go, what to stuff your mind with, what to stuff your brain with. 
you are temperate and you are self-controlled in all things. And it says in that verse 25, no, now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore, this is Paul the Apostle, I therefore, this is the one that has gone to the third heaven, come back. I therefore, this is the one that has seen the paradise. I therefore, this is the one that had the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ himself, commissioned by the Lord. And if that man could not be careless, how about you? The one who has gone to heaven and come back, who has seen angel and heard angel speak, if he could not be careless, how about you? There are some people that think that it doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter where I go. It doesn't matter how I dress. It doesn't matter about anything. I'm saved. I'm saved. It's more than that. It says, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, and so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep my body under. Apostle, I keep my body under. A preacher, I keep my body under. A child of God, I keep my body under. A spirit-filled man, speaking in tongues. But he said, I keep my, I keep my body under. So a privileged child of God. Paul the Apostle, greater than all the other apostles put together. He said, I put my body under and bring it into subjection, lest by any means when I have preached to others, when I have ministered to others, I myself should be a cast away. It's just telling us a simple thing. There is the cross, there is the self-denial, there is the self-discipline before the crown. Let's listen to the words of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 24. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Here is what Christ said. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. If any man will follow after me, let him deny himself. I'm going to ask you a question. Look at your life. What can you say? Since you became a Christian, what can you say now that you claim to be a Christian? What are you denying yourself of? The people of the world, there are things they do. They are self-indulgent. They indulge themselves. And the Christian, the one who is following after Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ said, If any man is going to follow me, if you are not just religious, like all those people out there are religious, if you are not just here for fun, if you are not just hearing about heaven, about our eternal destiny, only for fun, if you make up your mind you want to follow Christ until the very end, until you get to heaven, Jesus Christ said in that verse 24, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Since you came to this retreat, you have heard the word of God, you have prayed, you said, Oh Lord, do this, do this. What have you denied yourself of? What are you thinking of after this retreat? I'll deny myself of that because it's going to hinder me from getting to heaven. I'll deny myself of this because it's going to hinder my usefulness in the kingdom of God. That is what it takes. And then Jesus said, and he takes up the cross. He takes up the cross and then he follows me. You cannot effectively follow the Lord who bore the cross if you are not bearing your cross. There is a cross and that cross cancels out every self-indulgence in your life. That you become a militant child of God, a triumphant child of God. You are not an indulgent person, a careless person, a fleshly person, a worldly person. All those things you cast aside and you deny yourself of them. And then you bear the cross. The cross might be heavy. And the cross might be something that cancels self. And it cancels sin. And cancels the thing you try, you want to enjoy. But he says, you bear that cross and you follow after him. And he says, if you don't do that, you are just an observer in the kingdom of God. You are not a real child of God. Because he says, if you are going to be my disciple, my real follower, he says, you are going to bear your cross. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 34. 
Mark chapter 8, verse 34. And when he had called the people unto him, with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. Whosoever. Do you know that there are some people, they give themselves liberty, they say, well, I cannot, uh, you know, follow the word of God and be strict and be narrow-minded and then keep to that holiness of life. I'm an apostle. They say, I'm a bishop. And they think the higher they go, the cooler they become. They think the higher they go, the more liberty they have to be able to do anything, whatever. But Jesus Christ said that if anybody, an apostle, a bishop, a preacher, a pastor, a general superintendent, a general overseer, any leader, any worker, and a member of the church, of course, he says, if anyone is going to follow after me, we don't take clothes into our hands. I've graduated from obeying the word of God. I've graduated from, you know, looking at that word. You can go and control those little ones and those young people, but this is my position now. It doesn't count. It says, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and let him take up his cross and follow me. I pray God will open our eyes to this truth in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 21. Let me tell you the background. It was a rich young man that ran after Jesus and knelt down. And he said, Master, good master, what shall I do to inherit the kingdom of God? And then Jesus gave him the word. I want to, you know, uh, help you to understand Jesus has just one standard of the word of God. And Jesus is no respecter of persons. You know, as we are here, we are from different classes in society. Some of us are moderate. Some of us are ordinary. Some of us are very, very high. We have some of us who have come from university. We are professors. We have some of us who have come from the uh, political circle. And we have great office over there. And when we get to our office, uh, you know, some of us will say, Your Excellency, and we respect you. And we bow before you. When we come to the kingdom of God, it is the same standard. God doesn't have two standards for the kingdom of God. There are some churches. They will not tell about, they will not tell the rich people repentance, about restitution, about righteousness, because they think that he's a great man. He's, a highly placed, he's an highly placed man. And because he's highly placed, they're not going to tell the truth to them. And then in our own church here, we have the people who are called the IFL. And then sometimes when you listen to, you know, the people that go to talk to them, the IFL, they water down the gospel so much that there is no cross for the IFL member to carry. And there is no self-denial for the people that are high. And somebody says, I'm a chief, I'm a king. I'm an Oba, I'm an Ubi in my territory. And then they come. And the preachers are so grateful that this great man has come. And they will not tell them the truth of the word of God. And then when they come to us, ordinary people, they lash us, they give us the word, except you repent, you will likewise perish. But that's for everybody. And so this great man... This rich man, this highly placed man came to the Lord and he, he wanted to know what.